Continuing on the topic of Neo-Krishna Consciousness, discussing changes in Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON that I have noted since the 1970s or how things are different. I'm mostly looking at the uh, things which I don't find to be good. The term Neo-Krishna Consciousness is sarcastic because truly speaking, there's no such thing as Neo-Krishna Consciousness. Sometimes this prefix Neo is used in that sarcastic, sardonic manner. Krishna Consciousness means Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavana Matihi. It doesn't change the what is Krishna consciousness doesn't change. The manner of presentation may change, the ethos in which its practice is being changed, but the core of Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, and so on, that doesn't change. So what I'm looking at is all kinds of watering down new age accretions and so on and so on. Just this morning, I got in my inbox, was forwarded to me something which really is undeniably unimaginable when Srila Prabhupada was present with us. The post is about transgender Hare Krishna and allies. And there's a post, an invitation. Are you a devotee of transgender, non-binary or intersex experience? Are you an ally? Please join us for Sangha with those of similar experience, weekly trans Sangha Zoom meetings and a monthly Sangha allies included. Didn't happen when Prabhupada was present. In the 1970s, the overwhelming mood, I'm talking from my experience, but I'm sure that many of my god brothers and god sisters, trans? No, <laughs> just god brothers and god sisters, that's all. Not god anything else's. <laughs> the mood, the, the pervasive mood was that we have to do what Srila Prabhupada says. He is perfect and he knows best. Now, often it seems more like let's not do what Prabhupada said. Some idea, either spoken or not spoken, that Previously, everything devotees did was wrong. Going out chanting in public was wrong. Our, the enthusiasm and idealism we had was wrong. The book distribution was wrong. Now we are more mature. Now we got it right. Not said, but seems to be implicit that Srila Prabhupada did a great job of bringing Krishna consciousness to the West. Yes, very good. But he made so many mistakes, and we now better know how to preach in the West in the 2020s. You know, no one says that. Maybe they do. But at least it's implied. Otherwise, why not just do what he says? Yeah, we can imagine uh, going into Srila Prabhupada's room. Srila Prabhupada, we want to show you a new project, photos. Photos of our new yoga studio. Here's a photo of us teaching yoga in front of the deities. 
Yeah, sure. Unimaginable at the time. A GBC has endorsed a book describing in detail how Srila Prabhupada made so many mistakes. It literally says, the whole book, the subject of the book, is that Prabhupada made so many mistakes, and this is why he's wrong. And it's a, a, a GBC endorsed book. Some devotees think that overall the changes are better. As you can understand from the tone of this talk, I think just the opposite. Where does that leave us? Ya nisha sarva bhuta nam tasyang jagarti sangyami yasyang jagrati bhutani sa nisha pashyato munehe. What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self control, and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. So you may say that, well, okay, we have different opinions. It's, it's so different. It's night and day difference. Self-controlled, who, who's preaching about that? Not the transgender devotees, that's for sure. What, what ex what, ex what experiences you have, intersex experiences, they're going to talk about their sexual experiences, and that's the Sangha. <laughs> There's a whole generation lost with understanding and approach to Krishna consciousness very different to what we imbibed from Srila Prabhupada in the 1970s. It's like a bunch of young know-alls who... You can't say anything to because they they know. Oh, you old people, you got it all wrong. You messed it all up. We're, we're gonna we're gonna do it different now. It is different. It it seems like it, the the mood in much of Iskon today. It seems like a different flavor to what we had in the nineteen seventies. You could say, well, the flavor may be different, but the substance is the same. Just like, for instance, <clears throat> you, you can cook kitchery every day and have different flavors. You can make it with different spices. You can put more or less ghee. You can have sweet kitchery. Or uh, if you put some raw mango, you can have sour or you can have sweet and sour. You can have all different flavors but it's pretty much the same basic nutrition. That's true, although different spicing will affect the, according to Ayurveda, it'll affect what happens to your body also. It's, it's not just the uh, carbohydrates and the protein and this and that, but the, the different uh, spices do have a different effect on the metabolism. But Kitchari... Well, what is it? It's a mixture of the, the basic ingredients. It's a mixture of dal and rice cooked together. You can have 40% rice, 60% dal. Usually you wouldn't have it around the other way. That, uh, sorry, you have yeah, 40% dal, 60% rice. You wouldn't usually have it around the other way with with 40% rice and 60% of dal. If you have 70% rice and 30% dal, it's, you're getting away from the basic recipe. But if you have only 0% or, or only 5% dal and 95% and or 100% rice, then it's not kitchery. So you can say that we're, it's basically the same thing and we've just adjusted a few things, but there gets to a stage where it's not the authentic thing. Or you can have 50-50 or 60-40 or and add fish. <laughs> and you say, well, it's still basically, you still got, we got the right proportions, 60% rice, 40% dal or 50-50. But if you had fish, then it's not offerable to Krishna. Still kitchery. 
So in the same way, all kinds of compromises in the Christian conscious movement, strange ideas and confusion, so many different ideas, jato mot tato pot, that's let's all live together and tolerate and we all have different ideas, jato mot tato pot, all the paths are the same. That's not what Krishna teaches. So many ideas floating around can be very confusing. The uh, verse, there's one verse Srila Prabhupada often quoted. It's a, a well-known verse for, or part of a verse from the Upanishads. Kshurasya dhara nishyata duratyaya durgang patas tat kavayo vadanti. The, the path of spiritual realization is like a sharp razor's blade. It's, it's a tough one to handle. It's a difficult path to, tra to, to traverse. A sharp blade is needed to cut well, but it can be dangerous if you don't handle it properly. The danger can be reduced by blunting the blade, but then it doesn't serve its purpose so well. So he may say that, well, we, we, although tivrena bhakti yogena, the, uh, the advice is to practice bhakti yoga very intensely, but then we see it becomes intense, becomes tense. And you can't bring so many people in and people get burned out. So just let people go at their own pace with their own ideas. As long as they chant Hare Krishna, everything's okay. Hmm. Well, Bhakti you know, Thakur, Bhakti Stansasar Thakur, they opposed many people who were chanting Hare Krishna because they were not in the line of Rupa Goswami, Bhaktisthan Saswati, Rupa Anuga Virudha Apasiddhanta Dvanta Hari. He's the one who takes away the darkness of the misrepresentations or the uh, ideas that are opposed to Rupa Goswami. So the danger can be reduced by blunting the blade. We can, we can make it less intense, less tense, uh, and just embrace everyone, but then it won't serve its purpose. Or another example, lowering the bar. Everyone, everyone can do high jump if, it's, if the bar is not high. But the, the aim is high, then we're not aiming high, then it's not high jump. So what are we looking at? We're, we're looking at a movement that is increasingly not committed to pure devotional service, even though there may be a lot of talk about prem, but the idea of giving up sense gratification, sense control, which are prerequisites for those of us who are conditioned souls to even practice Krishna consciousness seriously. Of course, you may say, well, you get a higher taste, then you automatically give up the lower taste, but you won't get a higher taste if we are to use another example, pouring water on the fire of sense desire from one side and pouring fuel from the other. So it's not a society dedicated to kamasya nindriya pritir labho jiveta yavata jivasya tattva jignasa narto yasche har karma bihi. Life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire a healthy life or self-preservation since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. That's the only reason we should desire to maintain the body. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. We're not a society committed to guru mukha padma vakya chite te koriya aikya arna koriya mane asha. It just 
completely giving ourselves to the words of Srila Prabhupada and not desiring anything else. The urge to be fully Krishna conscious. And of course, again, I have to stress, there are so many good, serious devotees all over the world, but there's also this periphery, is it periphery or is it mainstream? Seems to be more and more mainstream of practicing Krishna consciousness in a very light, take it as you like kind of way. The, the urge for anyabhilashita shunyam, the, the de desireless, to have no other desire other than to serve Krishna, to become purified, that, that strong endeavor to fully give ourselves to Krishna is missing and we make it light and easy then it becomes superficial it leads to sahajism high talk let's not talk about all those nasty things like all those dirty things in our heart you just chant hari krishna and that all goes away right cheto darpana marjanam bat bahu janma kare jadi shravan kirtan tabutana pai krishna padi premadham we're also warned that we won't cleanse the heart, even in lifetimes of chanting, if we make offenses in chanting. So we have this high talk, low walk, which is sahajya. A lot of talk about prem and bhav and manjaris and radha lila with little acknowledgement that we are far away from even being qualified to talk about these things. Of course, we, it's not that we should ban the word prem or gopi, but we are a long way from that. If you happen to be on the level of Radha Bhav, all very well and good. But even then, uh, it's not something to be bandied about as if it was just the most ordinary thing. Sense gratification and pure devotional service don't go together. Bhogaishvarya prasaktanam tayapa hrita cheta sam vevasayatmika buddhi samadho navidhi yate In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things. The resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Sense gratification and pure devotional service don't go together. How much do we hear surrender to Krishna being discussed? Giving up sense gratification. How much do we hear that being discussed? Instead of practicing Krishna consciousness to rise to the transcendental level. They want to bring Krishna consciousness down to the mundane level where it's okay, you can chant Krishna, Krishna, or you can chant Shiva, Shiva. You can follow the standard rules of sadhana bhakti, for instance, taking only food offered to Krishna, or you can eat kami food, or you can offer kami food to Krishna. It's like we want the, the blessings or the, the goal of Krishna consciousness while ignoring the requirements. And then we, we make out Srila Prabhupada to be unlimitedly merciful. Well, he was, but he, we, the mercy means he gives us the means to become purified. But merciful doesn't, that Krishna's mercy is that he doesn't give pure devotional service. Muktim dadati karhichet smana bhakti yogam. Krishna doesn't give pure devotional service very easily. It's his mercy that he gives it to us at all when we're not interested. But mercy doesn't mean that you can do any damn nonsense you like and you'll also get love of God. So focusing on Srila Prabhupada's and Krishna's love and acceptance of us to the exclusion 
of their teachings about rules, self-sacrifice, discipline, obedience. This is, then this is sahajya. This is what Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur had to fight about. Tolerating or even celebrating sinful activities while claiming to be a devotee. What is that? Celebrating sinful activities? What was that about? Transgender experiences? Intersex experiences. I have to look up the word intersex. I don't know what it means, but it, it doesn't sound it's going to be anything very good. Oh, we 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 do an, we do some devotional service because it makes us feel good. To the, we do it to the extent that it makes us feel good without serious commitment. I'm saying sahajya. I'm going to say, well, well we're not sahajyas, but. It's the same kind of thing going on. Sahajyaism means taking things easy. Enter Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sampradaya and messed it up so badly, severely polluted it, so that ordinary people could not distinguish between Sahajyabhav and Shuddhabhav. That means ordinary people seeing from the outside they couldn't distinguish between who's actually a pure devotee and who's not. And those coming to or inside, they also couldn't. Many uh, Vaishnavas in Bengal and Orissa and Vrindavan were shocked by Bhaktivinoda Thakur and especially Bhakti Standard. So I say, what's wrong with you? We're, we're just following in our parampara and we have our gurus and... We're just doing what everyone else is doing. I had this experience in the 1970s. There was a Bengali devotee initiated in ISKCON, and I was speaking to him about how uh, this fish-eating Vaishnavas, this is very bad, and he became upset and said, what are you talking about? I, I, I come from a Vaishnav village. Everyone in our village is a Vaishnav. We all eat fish, and our guru eats fish also. He said, our guru. He'd been initiated by an ISKCON guru, but he's still identifying with the guru in his village. So it's not exactly the same as traditional sahajirism, but something similar is happening now by adjusting to the present zeitgeist, the, the present ethos, modernism under various pretexts, sense gratification is entering. Maybe it's subtle in some cases, but eventually it's going to be gross. There are already prominent out-and-out -out Sahajya groups in the West. And we should understand that we're not in competition with them because they cater to fools and rascals. So we shouldn't imitate them because they attract many people who want something cheap. We should cater to sincere people who want the real thing and are willing to do what is needed to get the real thing, to accept the austerities and the rules and regulations and take the trouble to understand and live the philosophy. Now, it may be that these rascal, bogus gurus who are promoting sahajirism, in this... Uh, imitation bhakti. Uh, it may be that some of the people coming to them are just misled. So we can preach to them also, but we should, we should be different and make it clear that we are different and, and not think that we should adopt their means of just making everything cheap and making it so user-friendly that it's not according to Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. It will be a tragedy if ISKCON becomes largely indistinguishable from Sahajiyas and New Ages. But that's practically going on. Is that not an insult to Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas? A betrayal of Srila Prabhupada? But it's already like that. 
I mentioned about that sign at the entrance to Bhaktivedanta Mana. What was that? Gratitude, compassion. At the center which Srila Prabhupada called his European headquarters, where he danced in bliss installing Radha Gokula Ananda. You can see the video. Thanks to Yadava Prabhu. We deliberately, at that very center, we deliberately don't put Krishna at the, set, at the entrance. And there may be somebody, well, yes, okay, but uh, we have to preach in the modern age and the means justifies the end, but the means can change the end also. Ostensibly, the end, the end in my, that was another thing which was popular in ISKCON some 20 maybe 25 years ago. What was that? The seven habits of highly successful people. Start with the end in mind. So ostensibly the end might be to, prog- to propagate pure devotional service, but by propagating mixed devotional service or deviant devotional service, we stand to get a whole movement of mixed devotees, maybe thinking themselves pure devotees because they talk about prem and they feel the bhav when they do kirtan, but that's sahajya. Sahajya means trying to make an easy way. It's so easy that there's no surrender. There's no effort to get freedom from material desires. There's no effort. That's hard work. That's hard work. It's going to take years to... Strictly follow the principles, discipline the mind, study the books. It requires a lot of commitment. It requires seriousness. We can get a lot of light, fluffy people, but they're not going to go back to Godhead by chanting Om Namo Shivaya and feeling in their hearts some bhav. Is it hard to understand that we are the Hare Krishna movement, not the Shiva movement or a feel-good neo-Hindu movement or a multi-faith movement? We're meant to be followers of Srila Prabhupada. It's not that whatever Srila Prabhupada taught, we should do the opposite with pleasure and pride, gay pride, transgender pride, no shame whatsoever. The mindset is fundamentally secular. They don't look to Shastra and tradition when there, when there are issues to discuss. Well, they don't discuss issues, but if there are any, any doubts, problems, contentious issues arise, they don't look to Shastra. They look to what they, social science, what, what, what the mass media say, they want bhakti without Vedanta. And then the Hare Krishna movement gradually or quickly becomes like any other religious group, some kind of church blending with the rest of society. Uh, the, the public give us a pat on the head. Yes, very nice. Uh, as long as, yes, you're also good. You, we're also they look at Hare Krishna, if they see us at all, they just see us. Yeah, they don't do any harm. They're all, yeah, they're also nice. They also, they're also accept everything, feminism, transgenderism, everything. It's all okay. Uh, devotees, therefore, become very peaceful. They don't have to contend with all these bogus, rascal, demoniac ideas. But that kind of peace... It's illusory. It's the, it's the kind of peace that we get by compromising and, and not standing up for what we're supposed to believe in. It, it symbolizes the watered-down way in which our so-called preaching is conducted. Then we're just something on the side If, if people think of us, they think, yeah, yeah they're okay. They sing, they, they have nice food. How far do we go to adjust to this demoniac society? Contraception. In Ireland a few years ago, not very long ago, there was a, a vote 
should abortion be allowed or not, a referendum, and so I was told. Some of the devotees voted for and openly said that they voted for abortion should be allowed. Homosex, transgender, how far do we go? What's next? And they say, well, that's not very harmful. That's not very bad. I mean, abortion, yeah, it's not so good, but anyway. Homosex, what's the problem? Consensual sex, but it was seen as a problem by the vast majority of karmis not so long ago. Now it's not seen as a problem. Uh, right now, what's, what's seen as wrong? in Kami society, pedophilia, incest, zoophilia, that means uh, having sex with animals, rape, raping old women, cannibalism. Well, just like it was unthinkable that contraception, there was a time when contraception was considered very, very bad, widely considered very, very bad. That changed. Abortion was considered very, very bad. Homosex was considered very, very bad. But now it's changed. So what if the society changes and pedophilia and incense, zoophilia, cannibalism, they become accepted? Do we, do we go along with that also? No, that's impossible. But then uh, go back a few generations and say, well, in, in future, devotees will accept contraception and abortion and transgender and homosexual. No, that's impossible. Where are we heading for? Once you, once you start to compromise and don't follow the standards of Shastra and the Acharyas, there are a lot of trouble. Shuti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidhing Vina Aikantagi Hare Bhakti Utpate Aiva Kalpate if you care to read Srila Prabhupada's books, you'll find this verse quoted many times. Uh, devotional service, so-called devotional service, which does not conform to the tenets of the Shastra, is simply a disturbance in society. So it might be claimed that, well, somehow or other, anyone who's chanting Hare Krishna is there to be congratulated and, and encouraged Yes, okay. On one hand, that's true. It's better people chant Hare Krishna than, than they don't. But on the other hand, if they so badly misrepresent the Sampradaya that what should not be done is done in the name of Krishna consciousness, then what situation do we have? Evam parampara praptam imam raja ashayo viduhu sakale neha mahata yoga nashta parantapa. Krishna said, I delivered, I delivered this science to the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, to Vivisvan. It was passed down by the Parampara system, but in, by the mighty effect of time, or in, in the course of time, in a long time, it became lost. So that danger is always there. It may, be, it may be just a short time since Srila Prabhupada left. And so many strange things have, record, have, have entered. I salute those who continue to seriously follow, who want nothing to do with this wishy-washy, me-first approach, and who recognize it for what it is, a betrayal of all that Srila Prabhupada worked hard for. And of course, not all devotees are in this mess. But as much as we stray from what Srila Prabhupada ordered, that much we are deviated. Our perception of Srila Prabhupada has largely changed from seeing him as an absolute transcendental personality to seeing him as a well-meaning well old man who often didn't know what he was talking about. GBC certified book. There's a, what's going on? There's incessant propaganda going on from a certain section within this movement. 
giving all these ideas, all these things. It's going on. Uh, Srila Prabhupada said that this movement cannot be destroyed from outside, only from inside. We sing, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chitete Korya Aika. Some of us sing it. Do we believe it, actually? From Srila Prabhupada's purport to Madhya Leela of Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 19, text 156. As soon as one is deviated from the instructions of the spiritual master, the uprooting of the bhakti lata begins and gradually all the leaves dry up. So that's true individually and collectively. Individually, we'll get dried up from real devotional service. Even if we feel bhav in our heart, if it's not the real thing, we're disconnected. And as a whole movement also, let's read it again. As soon as one is deviated from the instructions of the spiritual master, the uprooting of the bhakti lata begins and gradually all the leaves dry up. He may say, well, I'm following my spiritual master. Well, is he following Srila Prabhupada? I mentioned to one devotee, why are you wearing a beard? Prabhupada didn't like that. Well, my guru said it was okay. Why did he say it was okay? If Prabhupada said it's not okay, we're on a slippery slope. If you enter a slippery slope, sooner or later, we're going to slip, we're going to slide. And it's happening. Ah, what fun it is to slide. Vanchakalpa Tarupyas Chakripa Sindhubya Evacha Patita Nampa